Hi and welcome to a winner's corner that will focus on Saturday's race day at Hagmyren racetrack. We have a nice V75 round with great sport and Harry, what do you look forward to the most with this race day? A day of uh, really top class racing. We've got uh, a fabulous uh, program ahead of us and uh, I'm trying very hard to keep a straight poker face which is giving you an indication of where I'm going but uh, I can tell you it's a great race meeting. Very well then, we start in race five, which equals the first leg in the V75 round. And already here, Harry, uh, we got a little indication from you on what you are going to talk about in this class two race over full distance, didn't we? Absolutely. Uh, Seven Vestibro Poker Face uh, is a favourite of mine. I'm a very uh, good friend to one of the owners of, of uh, Vestibro Poker Face. Spoke to them yesterday. They say that Poker Face is in absolute top uh, condition right now. He's absolutely on the top of what he can produce. He's going to win tomorrow. And I'm really saying he's going to win. So climb in. <laughs> a very safe win bet there from Harry in, uh, in the fifth leg on number seven, Vestibule, a poker face. We turn the page to race six, which equals the second leg in the V75 round. It's a race for mares, 15 of them over the long distance, 2,640 metres. Circular start. And uh, who has caught your eye here? Jürgen Westholm, Somalia Cash. Uh, she did really, really well. I tipped her last time, uh, you might remember. Uh, she came third in that particular race. We're watching her now. She's driven there by Oscar J. Andersson, uh, top-class uh, apprentice in Sweden, and does a really, really good performance here. Uh, she's got a really, really good chance here of finishing those first three. I have very difficult to see her not finishing in the first three. What a good show, a bit. Two and a half, three times to one. We're earning money. Number 10, Am Amalia, Amalia Cash must finish in the top three for us to cash out. We jump on to race eight. And now we're talking co-blooded horses over full distance. Circular start, they divide it up over three tiers. And number 12, you are Faxe is the favourite. And you want to use this horse in a canola. Absolutely. Ulf Olsen's up. He's a very, very strong horse, this one. Uh, knows where the winning line is. We take a look here with that lovely white face. Uh, and as I say, he's my banker for the Quinella, although it's a straight Quinella we have. Uh, but uh, I'm very, very safe about him finishing in the first two. And uh, this is the second horse, then, that you pair him second up Second one is uh, Urian Schielström up. He's got a phenomenally good hand with the Northern Breds, uh, does Urian Schielström. And I feel uh, with... Uh, with him in the Quinella, we, we, we're looking at about seven, eight times the money, and, and, and that's a good return. So I'm really hoping that Urian Schielström uh, uh, comes in with uh, number 12, uh, you, you are facts in that Quinella. So 3-12. A nice Quinella suggestion there in race eight, and we move on now to the daily double that we have in races 10 and 11. Uh, we have to find the winner in both of these races, and uh, starting in DD1, the gold division. Um, we have a big favourite in uh, number two, Volstead, and you see no reason going against him, Harry. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Uh, you just cannot uh, fault this horse. He's been up against the best international horses in the world throughout this uh, year. He's, in fact, won one or two in grand style. He's a very dangerous horse from the front, and I can't see anything stopping him get to, into the lead into that first turn. And I think it's going to be Volstead from start to finish. If there's anyone that could possibly upset him, it could be Heavy Sound, number 11. Uh, we know what a finish he's got, but quite seriously, it's going to be tough. Very tough to crack number two, uh, Volstead. Banker. Banker. DD2 is a long distance race uh, where number four, Don Parignon with Orian Sistian, bears the weight of being the favourite. But here you believe that the favourite is a vulnerable one and you go instead for Tessio. Absolutely. I uh, liked what I saw last time. I know Robert Bagg uh, uh, thinks a lot about this horse. He's come on a tremendous amount and uh, has a really, really high form at the moment. I don't think there's going to be any champagne uh, corks popping for number four. So uh, I, I took a, a, a better double because we've got such a big favourite in the first leg just to give us a chance to at least earn a reasonable bit of amount of money if, if Tessio wins. Otherwise, look at Six Flash hammering as well. A possible winner there too. The V75 round this Saturday is a round that Harry is quite determined to figure out. And uh, he's given an indication already on how he's going to play it. Because we've already been through five of the races. That is uh, the first, second, fourth, and then also the two uh, daily double races. And first of all, Harry, is there any information that you want to add about those five races that we've already been through? 
Possibly in leg two, uh, that uh, you, you obviously nine Linda's girl has been a disappointment lately, but I think there have been reasons for that. And uh, of such a capable horse, uh, I wouldn't leave them out. Uh, number 11, uh, number 13, there, Calamari's girl coming back into form, and this is a really classy uh, horse. So uh, those are the two that uh, I would warn in that second leg. Um, otherwise, as I say, I think we are so well covered. Uh, I really mean at this time, I want to give you seven right, mm -hmm. and I think with Vesterbro poker face doing the game in the first race and Volstead finishing in the second last leg. It's home and dry this time. <laughs> we have two more races though to take a closer look at and that is V75 3 and 5. Starting in the third leg, Harry, a class one division race over sprint distance. Um, you seem to feel safe with the four most trusted horses, but which one is the most interesting one of these ones? The one for me, and uh, I suggest a show bet or an each way bet, is 3 Thelma de Glatting. Uh, came third last time, I supported her and uh, she, uh, she really does well here. Uh, Eric Ardielson up there, but uh, as I say, Thelma de Clatang is in form and I think could give us rather a good return for the show. And then in the fifth leg, you want to back up the favourite number three, Antonio Tabak, who's been absolutely fabulous in his last races, uh, with number two, Empty Joanville. How come? M.T. Jeanville is a, a fabulous uh, horse as well. He comes from the same stable, and that stable is in high form. But uh, M.T. Joanville, I must say, uh, is very fast out, and I see as a strong candidate to take the lead. But who can stop three Antonio to back after that performance from draw 11 last time. Um, but as I say, if there's anything that could be uh, that short straight, uh, the finishing straight at Hogmere is very short. And if MT Joinville gets into the lead and stays there to the straight, she's go he's going to be hard to beat. But we're well covered then with those two. We're horses. very well covered. Thank you so much, Harry. And uh, we can now see that uh, this V75 system for the Saturday, it contains 960 combinations. Of course, you find out more information about Swedish trotting and horse betting at our website, SwedishHorseRacing.com. And with that, we wish you the best of luck with your bets this Saturday. Bye-bye.